Hi everyone, uh, we should be on live from uh, the Fiverr Trading Room. Uh, hope you guys are well. You know, we are uh, just a few minutes, uh, 30 minutes after a big, big CPI news. Uh, we're going to talk about it today. We will check if we can uh, find some good spots. Uh, first of all, let me know if the sound is good, if you see me, if everything is set up uh, properly, and then we're gonna directly dig into the market. Buen dia, Matias. Hi, how are you today? Hi, Latam. I hope you are well. Uh, yeah, the market is continuing to move. Uh, and the euro dollar, I think we pushed probably one 150 pips uh, 100 pips after the news S&P and Nasdaq also we pushed 2% uh, 2.3% in the S&P up um, so you know let's move directly into into MT5 uh, let me know if you see the screen I think it's good Hi, do I have to wait 24 hours to receive the account after the purchase? No, you should get the account directly after um, after you register, but just one minute guy will explain something before. We have actually a small uh, technical issue uh, on our uh, server here at the Fiverr. So uh, actually you will not get the, inst the account instantly. Uh, we have a technical team that is working on the issue. Uh, so as soon as possible, we will get the account into your email. You don't need to worry you will get the account uh, very soon. So that's for uh, the information. Dashboard are not working as well. Uh, for people that uh, succeed to purchase a new account, uh, please guys be patient. We know that there is a, a delay with the account's um, details. Uh, so just, uh, so also apologize for the inconvenience. Uh, this can happen and we are working on it. Okay, uh, let's move back to the market. Uh, we are here to talk about market, to trade together, uh, find, you know, good spot. If we have at the moment, you know, I, I feel a bit uh, nervous by making any trades here. I didn't have any uh, open position before the CPI news. Maybe we can open uh, Forex Factory. I will show you what's actually the, um, the result uh, that we receive. Okay, so here are the CPI news. As you can see, guys, it was CPI 30 minutes uh, before. Uh, CPI year, uh, the previews was 7.7%. The forecast was 7.3%. And the actual inflation uh, in, in US is 7.1%. So it's below, okay, so guys, you see it's below the forecast. So actually, the news is telling us that the inflation is less uh, powerful than it was uh, one week ago and then two weeks ago. I think we can see the graph uh, here to understand. Yeah. Okay. So this was uh, April 2021 during the uh, after the COVID. We know that the inflation pushed. We topped here and and you know it looks like we top here for the inflation trade. I believe that we will see a decreasing um, inflation during the next few months. Uh, you know, I all the time have to tell you that the, the price go back to the mean at some point. Here you see it's very far. 
Um, don't worry with the FOMC, so guys, you should be careful also for this event. Uh, they're going to talk about inflation and then what to expect for the uh, uh, 2023 uh, year. Uh, but again, and I think I explain and I continue with my mindset. I have the dollar index. Thank you for uh, for bringing it, uh, bringing it to the chat a lot time, but. Uh, the dollar index is actually crashing down um, after a huge movement. So, you know, when there is inflation, uh, generally the uh, dollar value will uh, increase and the opposite, it will decrease. So here we have uh, quite um, a small surprise. Okay, this is still in the uh, close to the, to the forecast, but it's a little bit below. Uh, this push the market up. We will see what's the reaction, but this is uh, quite clear. Uh, you see on the daily chart, we break uh, the last high from previous week. On the euro dollar, it's um, quite powerful. We had an, an uptrend line here that keeps holding. Um, okay, and uh, yeah, let's move to dollar index if you want to check uh, what's going on there. Okay, I don't know if you remember, guys, but last week on the on the weekly forecast, I explained that after we to touch the top here, the next buying momentum, okay, will come around that area. Okay, you see all that area here, the red line, uh, which was the around the top of 2016, the top of 2020. We break out this huge uh, zone uh, on 2022, and and we, it looks like we are going straight into the zone so i'm looking for that zone there are still some space to make a sell uh, but of course as you know guys i will not open a sell position after the market has break out um, a new law okay so here we see we break a new law opening a sell here is not for me the good uh, decision if i want to open a sell i will wait the market to retrace probably to the breakout and then opening a sell around that spot and then continue that's generally on my, or, or I'm working and if we uh, go into the euro dollar and we see for example in the h1 or in the h4 for example that you see actually it can be uh, starting to see we start to make um, a top around that spot on the h4 chart guys we will see it even better but we break out straight above the 20 standard deviation which is the Bollinger bands uh, the average is here so the markets need to come down opening a buy here. So here selling the dollar index or buying the euro USD is actually not uh, the good things to do. You know that I'm not a breakout uh, trader. I like to play uh, a theory which is called reversion to the mean. Uh, here there is a huge movement. Uh, the market can calm down, goes back to the mean, which will be in the M1. In the M5, the, the average will come up, probably go into here, and then maybe we can continue on the upside. Okay, but making a bar here is definitely not a good, uh, uh, say in my theory, again, if you guys uh, are like breakout or momentum trading, whatever it is, go for it. But again, my mindset is telling me not going by here mm -hmm. after the market push in a few amount of time, 1%, okay, 1%, which is 100 pips in a matter of few minutes. Uh, wait, you know, you have, you have to be patient. You don't need to uh, panic and, and go and buy, okay? Generally, retail traders and, and traders that begins, you know, when they see a long movement like that, they are starting to panic and they are starting to make uh, not conscious uh, uh, trading, okay? So here making a buy is definitely not the point we are looking for. Just wait for the market to go back to the mean. We see that we are here on the H4, um, an uptrend. Okay, so you see maybe on the H1 we can see even better, but uh, on the H1 we had here uh, an uptrend uh, momentum, H4, the average is the one here. Um, you can wait for the market to go back to the mean and then uh, starting to build your position. Okay, what you can do also is opening a sell position at that spot, uh, which for the moment I will not do because we are against the trend. Okay, you see 
You see it clearly we are against the trend, guys. If you open a sell here, uh, this can be difficult. Okay. Uh, only for experienced traders, you can maybe open sell uh, here, build a position, make a stop loss not so far, and create a position. But the best here would be to wait the market starting to go down and continue with the position. Um, so this is my, uh, my mindset, actually. And you see here, we l it looks like the market is consolidating around here. Push, base, we'll see if the market can rally again. Uh, we have the US market opening in uh, 20 minutes. What happening in the S&P, probably the same. Uh, M1 pushed and then starting to consolidate. Okay, very classical before uh, the news. I don't think we're gonna break a new high uh, before the opening. Uh, but it is what it is, okay? Again, I will not make a buy at that spot for the same reasons. Okay, we break out a higher high, the market will go back to the mean. You see, it's quite the same setup that we are here, guys. You know if you see that, but uh, this is quite the same setup. Uh, we break a new high here. We break a new high. Panic people will say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm buying, it's a breakout. I'm buying, I'm buying, you know. And, and then the market go back to the mean. Here it go back even below the mean. Okay, you see the mean is here. The mean is just here, guys. Okay, so break out strongly, market consolidate, and then we break down, go back to the mean, and then the market continue even lower, okay, uh, for that example. Here I expect quite the same, okay, the market can continue to push, but at some point the market will have to uh, come back. You see it's quite uh, the same example here on the left side. So we break out here, okay, I let the market do the move, uh, continue here can be the consolidation uh, here we make like a fake out and we go back around the mean uh, if I go back to the daily chart or whatever but uh, this is quite important to understand all the time the volatility mm -hmm. of the asset at each moment of time um, and yeah here even on the daily chart we are touching uh, the volume burns it seems the volatility is increasing at this point again um, it can be like this scenario, guys, you see here we break out, it touch Bollinger Band, then it, it continues, it flies, okay? The fact is that I'm waiting the market to retrace a bit and then making a, bu a better buy position. You see, it's still clear here. Here it was a very good buying opportunity. I don't know if you see, guys, but um, uptrend, support line, uh, Bollinger Burns. We have here all the uh, indication that making a buy for the long term might be a, uh, might be a good point. So here, my point of view, you know, guys, I, I can, um, it depends what type of, of, um, of trade you want to make and what type of mindset do you have and what are your target and what is your risk reward and what is your strategy. Um, and again, I like to, uh, to come with my theory and explain uh, what I think. Again, the market can continue to push, that's fine, okay? The market can continue even to push here, but at some point, and here, this is why the timing, the timing is very important, at some point, the market will go back. You know that the market is not making like that. It's not like crypto, you know, crypto is uh, high, <laughs> like more volatile and sometimes you have push, uh, which stand for a long time on Forex and on US indices and our, uh, you know, let's say classic assets. You don't have this type of movement. We have an uptrend, a momentum, we go back and then we continue. Okay, so we have waves all the time. Okay, and then we are all the time looking for the inflection point of each wave. This was this was for my explanation. Um, I can start to build a position here. It seems like we are losing momentum a bit. Of course, I will not hold it for a long amount of time. You see Bollinger Band is starting to increase. It can be a, a wake off. You see, we have a huge push, base, and then we continue. That's why I will start to build the position. This is not my whole exposure. Again, guys, I will like to repeat, and it's a disclaimer, all the trades and the analysis I'm providing to you is only and only for an educational purposes. 
trading is at your own risk and you take your own decision. Uh, any question guys maybe you want to review another pair or talk about something else let me know I like to discuss and to uh, interact with you this is why we have a trading room a daily trading room on the fibers um, I like to explain my mindset and, and what I see but again the main important thing is um, is for you guys okay if you have questions if you have uh, if you want to discuss you know we, we I know that I'm a trader like you you know uh, I'm only following my mindset and my strategy um, uh, for a long time and I'm still learning from it because uh, at some point you need to um, sometimes you need to polish your strategy uh, you need to backtest and you need to uh, uh, to change something sometimes uh, it, it will sometimes my, my strategy works better when the market is not moving okay my strategy will work in this type of market you see with a long uh, consolidation zone but actually I'm trying to adapt it when there is a huge movement of volatility uh, and the results have been very promising. Um, so I'm keep continuing learning and, and uh, working on it. Of course, I'm doing something I'm comfortable with. Uh, what about gold? What about gold, guys? Yeah, gold is also pushing. But we are still in the zone here. We starting to break out. For me, the eight eight thousand eight hundred level in gold uh, was for me a key zone. Actually, it seems as we break out far away. Also, it's quite the same. Uh, you see here, it's like Wyckoff, but uh, the market consolidate and then continue even higher. Uh, we can also start to build a position here. Um, today, it's quite risky what I'm doing. Okay, let's say the risk parameter here. It's a uh, on a grade of uh, on 10, I will say nine to 10 is quite very risky to do this kind of things. But again, I'm comfortable with the lot size and the exposure I'm going to take uh, building the position here. Um, I'm not waiting for the market to crash down in the opposite side, uh, but at least to go back at some point, probably to this zone, you know, in the gold, uh, even a bit higher. Um, uh, so yeah, let's start by building the position here on gold. need to understand how much stop loss there is here it's like 23 let me say 25 25 pips will be my maximum uh, stop loss starting from the first point um, gold is likely to continue we'll check SP also uh, hi maxwell as you're trading during the day how many pairs are you usually following uh, Actually, and, and mainly for this period, I'm looking at the USD pair, so mainly the Euro USD. The pound uh, USD is also something, also a pair that I'm looking for, but uh, it was much more volatile recently. So that's why, um, that's why I'm looking for Euro USD uh, at this point. Uh, you know, it depends. It, it very depends of each key zone. For example, in gold, I know that there is a, a big key zone in gold that was 1,800, so I was following for that also. Um, SNP is uh, still on trend, so I don't have specific pairs, but I can work on two or three pairs at the same time when I'm doing this kind of, you know, um, quick scalping, let's say day trade. Um, so yeah. Are you trading with supply and demand? Yes, I'm, I'm using supply and demand, but it's not my main uh, basic or my, my pillar of my strategy. 
are you trading what is your strategy what do you wait with bullish events you know guys i'm explaining a lot a lot of time uh, why i'm using this one um and very soon i cannot say say more about that but um, i'm going to tell more about this uh why i trade bollinger bands and why i'm trading with bollinger bands and what is the strategy and how i find it out and uh, is it working not working what's the risk all of this um i'm going to talk about it and discuss uh very soon so i don't want to enter deeper into the details but yeah i'm using bollinger bands for my trading stochastics uh, also key zone which is can be very important in my strategy and a lot a lot of points here which uh what here for that example what can be uh difficult is that there is at least no key zone you see on the daily chart or h4 chart there is nothing on the left side of the chart okay it seems uh there is no resistance for the market to stop so this is here one con one uh let's say drawback uh of what i'm doing now but that's part of my uh, strategy and that's why i'm telling you i just told you before that here the risk is like nine to ten if you can give it a grade after this switch movement uh, cpi news high inflation so yeah uh, as long as the risk is um, is uh, is clear you know I'm, I'm not waiting for the market uh, to ex to extend five or six percent up but the stop loss is very tight at some point the market can go back to the green line or maybe to the average here we need to check it uh, together your USD is not to sell until 1.106 uh, let's find it where it is together 1.06 1.0688 1 so it's just a bit above the stop loss uh, maybe i need to understand oh okay so you're looking for maybe this zone here um so you're looking for for this point we we are still in the zone you know uh, it's not we are not so far from that spot so maybe you can give some uh, uh some explanation uh joam why do you think that not joam uh founded trader why do you think that this point will be like the moment when we should start selling uh, you see I, i'm i'm building the position here the stop loss is just below i don't want to get more exposure but uh, i would like to know it's very interesting us market will open in the next uh, six minutes uh we'll check what's going on in the SP. did we get down a bit not it looks like there is no sellers at all what confirmation do you look for um like i said just before here uh especially after a big in uh, big news high impact news with a lot of volatility i'm looking for less confirmation i'm more uh, focusing on my data and my strategy that you know i backtest a lot uh, so here the confirmation um is just looking that the price is far away than the from the average and starting to build the position gradually okay so here there is no much confirmation it's more it's more like a signal that i'm waiting to get in order to enter the market so here i don't have confirmation and you will hear a lot of time institutional traders that will tell you hey i'm not looking for a confirmation because if you wait for a confirmation you will enter the market uh later you know uh, when you wait for the market in a breakout or i don't know when but i just give you an example I'll just give you an example very simple why i don't like confirmation and especially in this type of setup but um, okay very easy uh example we have a support here you see it's very clear it's a, it's a, everyone knows what is support i believe that most of you guys that trade in the favors or our traders know what is the support we have a support here the market uh, create a first point here a second point here so we believe it's a support at this point okay i will already starting to make a buy some people will say okay i'm waiting for a confirmation 
only after a few pips. So your entry will not be here, but your entry will be a bit above. Okay. And this part, you see this difference between waiting the confirmation and entering um, and entering on a signal and, and you know, on a, on a point uh, is much more, um, let's say, uh, efficient for your trading in the long term. So of course, at, at some time we'd say, hey, okay, maybe I don't have confirmation. Uh, the market can continue to go down. That's correct. That's why you need to do your research and to understand uh, what at some point it's a good point to, to enter the market or not. So that's why most of my uh, points, I'm not looking for, um, uh, for a signal. And especially in this type of setup, especially on this type of setup, I'm not waiting for a confirmation because there is nothing on the left side of the screen. You see there is no supply, nothing. I lack yen movement. Uh, what do you see in yen uh, pairs? Okay, let's uh, let's look into it. Yen pairs. Yeah, this looks like crashing down. But at some point, it's the same, guys. You see, huge movement. The market is losing momentum here. You see, the difference in in pips here is starting to make this type of things. Uh, and we can have like go back to the mean. I don't know, maybe here, and then we. We continue on the downside. This can something we can expect also on the dollar again. Uh, we don't know when. That's why the timing is very important. Uh, in such case, uh, of course, if you can attract the price here, like if the price today goes into that way, you can make an interesting scalp, especially after this huge, huge movement down. Here can be a place where you can actually open a buy position. Uh, but yeah, the movement in dollar yen is very impressive. I think we break out this line. You see, it was uh, the top of the two of December, uh, quite a support. Uh, and then we broke out here. Maybe this can be like some types of a target if we want the market to retrace. Um, so yeah, I don't want to make a buy here on the dollar yen uh, specifically because I'm already selling the Euro USD. I'm already selling the gold. They will probably go in the same way. Uh, but yeah, if, if you know, if you tell me what to do here, I will say uh, try to build a long position. Of course, not to wait the market to explode. It will not happen. I still think the dollar will uh, lose value in, in the short term. Uh, tomorrow there is FOMC also. Uh, but at least the strategy is only to uh, expect the market, you know, to equilibrate uh, the, uh, the price uh, that the market is giving to us. Okay, so probably a small push. That's it. Maybe we can start to. Uh, you see, and it's quite the same happening here on the on the US Euro USD. I will probably open um, another spot. I will just want to wait the opening. The opening is on the next uh, on the next minutes. Um, S&P is starting to go down a little bit. I will sell also the US USD here. Uh, okay, S&P just opened. We see uh, selling movement starting to go on. Of course, it's only the beginning. We should be careful. Uh, we just put a stop loss just after also, or maybe closing manually. And you see, we got already some reaction. You see some pin bar here uh, on the M5 minutes. A lot of pin bar on the top side. We have a dodgy here, inverted. Stochastics is above 80. Um, so this is quite a nice spot to make a sell. Of course, the stop loss should be very tight. If we if like we succeed to break this type of uptrend in the M1, I would probably uh, remove my stop loss uh, to break even gold can be the same. I hope it will not go into the opposite side. 
S&P is here pushing down. We will see the euro USD pushing down also. As you know, guys, this is something that I keep repeating when the uh, actually in, in the short term, specifically when we have uh, the euro USD, I don't know, maybe the S&P going down. You will have also the dollar index uh, going up. So the euro USD going down. I don't know if you understand, but here there is a positive correlation between the euro USD and the S&P in the short term. Here you see we already start in the door again to break this momentum. The market just opened. You're gonna see maybe another up uh, movement volatility here. Uh, probably go back if we can see to the M5. The mean is here. Uh, it can be the target around, around that area. I expect your USD starting to go into my way. I will remove the stop loss uh, just above. I uh, will start to take some profit already. And on gold, we also starting the same uh, movement. Mm. Mm. Sorry for that. Uh, okay, guys, it's gone our way. Uh, quite happy, quite happy to um, uh, probably close here. Thirty-three percent of my position. I will wait. I need to check the S and P also, as you know. Yeah, here it tries the same on gold. It's uh, the price is still strong, but you see we already have some rejection, some pin bar here. Stochastic is above 80, starting to cross. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's coming on. <laughs> it's coming on, like uh, England says for the World Cup. Sorry for you guys. You know I'm supporting France. Was very happy when Harry Kane push the ball into the space. <laughs> When he got the penalty, um, but yeah, uh, let's wait. I don't want to take any more. Hey, the SNP is still going down. Still going down here on the SNP. Can you look at the pound USD? Any ideas? It's quite the same idea in the EU. I think uh, the market pushed very far uh, i expect the market to retrace a bit uh, actually the market is going on the side on the good side but let's look at that yeah you see it's quite the same scenario guys okay here there is a huge gap um, but uh quite the same huge push consolidation uh, we already see some rejection at the top Stochastics above 80, the market go down. Uh, again, here it's, this is definitely not a good spot to make a sell here, okay? But uh, you see, it's quite the same setup. Definitely quite the same setup uh, that I found in the Euro and in the Gold. Definitely the same. Here with the first condor, maybe I will uh, probably push the. Uh What's happening in the door again? Pushed a bit, not enough. And gold is probably going down. It's just a nail, not not enough. Should be patient.
again, this can be also this can attract also some buyers here at that point. Um, looks like we break uh, that point. We already removed my stop loss to break even, um, and here we already make the trade for the day. Uh, what about gold? Exactly what's happening, guys. You see, losing momentum, uh, low volatility, crossing uh, again. Uh, we'll see where the price goes. Of course, it can be also like the next point would be waiting for the price to consolidate at the average, okay, and then selling it again. Okay, depends the confirmation you have at that point, but uh, um, it depends. It depends a lot of things. I just trail my stop here. Uh, we already break here on the M1, uh, this zone. I'm just trailing it. Where the price goes, I would be happy. Eldin James, yeah, dashboards are still in uh, are still under maintenance. Uh, we are sorry for that. The technical team is working on the issue. It's going probably to to be back uh, very soon. I hope so. Okay, so we have to push here on gold. We see if it can go to the first TP. Then we can remove. Um, we can move the stop loss to break even. Hey, Rizzo, thank you for the feedback. <laughs> it's not a classic way to trade generally after news, but. Uh, I'm doing that. Yeah, it can be the point where the market can retract a bit. You see, we already here on the M1, we already pushed uh, to the top of the standardization on the M1 and starting to cross. It can be a point where we can uh, have some people interesting to enter.
market is reacting here uh, probably will take the trading stop or maybe not that's why i'm very happy to trade with the fivers account at least there is zero spread here on the euro usd zero spread on the euro usd so i'm quite happy you know uh taking uh the trailing stop on the usd i'm out here on the euro usd uh let's focus on gold and check how it goes actually i didn't exit any any position here on gold especially but um we would have to wait for the next move you see i also put closer the stop loss um as we already have the first point the, the inflection point A first wave of sellers came here and they probably get stopped out here you see so we have the first sellers coming here they sell they probably put the stop loss around here institutional are putting their out uh, it can be the same for me but uh, again we push quite uh, quite quite high so I don't know Yeah, there is still a divergence in uh, in gold. You see here on stochastics. No, this is not a divergence. Sorry. Higher. Never mind. We're still starting to cross here. What's happening in the CAD? Uh, yeah, there is still some space for the cat to make a buy decision. We have a demand here, uh, but the fact is, it will be below the um, it will be below this trend line. Uh, you see, we always have F waves higher, higher low here. Um, so yeah, the first entry point can be you know making the first entry point around uh, around that area if we touch it today, and then it's continuing scaling in the position until we reach this demand. And then making the stop loss below this low here. So this is more like swing trading because it's eight four chart. Uh, but this is also quite setup that I can look for. Um, you know, when I hold the trades for longer time. Okay, looks like the S&P is having the inflection point here. Probably will fly from now, especially here. Not so far, but um, the market go back here, take the demand. Um, we will see what's happening. Okay, I'm very close on the stop loss. <coughs> I don't want to put it uh, higher than that. The market is highly volatile. I can like be in a very bad position uh, if I keep pushing my stop loss so far. It's quite a volatile session.
sometimes we can be lucky, you know. Here it's there is like high chance that the market took the stop loss and then go back. Uh, but sometimes it can be lucky. Um, it can work also. Trades quite going in, in, in the sa same direction for the euro. You see, we we just take, uh, we just um, we just push the market a little bit down to this demand here. Uh, didn't succeed for my to take the seven profit. Uh, here I would be tipping out, you know, I'm quite close of the stop loss. You see, so we succeed to take here the first demand. I take TP here, but didn't succeed to get to the second place. Um, and on the S&P, the S&P we only had one point, which is here. Yeah, gold taking stop loss. We'll see where the market can push. Um, but yeah, I, I will I will try another steps, um, another entry after the market come down later on. I think the Aussie dollar is meeting a demand zone. Let's look at the Aussie dollar. I didn't talk about it yet. Uh, I don't know. It's not the demo. Yeah, it's okay. I know. I know what you look uh, uh, for, but probably here this point. I, I don't know which point you're looking for, liquid. But uh, from thirteen September, thirteenth of September, twenty twenty two. It's Aussie dollar. Okay, so it's this zone here. Okay, uh, yeah, first of all, it's not the demand, but this is a supply. Uh, yeah. yeah, but I will not. Yeah, maybe this zone. Again, we already tried to reject this zone here and here, but it looks like the, the trend is, is very clear here. Long uptrend on the Australian dollar. Here and we have uh, probably here you see making higher high all the time. But yeah, but that's correct. Here it looks like the market is um, having difficult higher high. Today we make a higher high because of the CPI news, definitely because of the USD that lose value. Um, and yeah, you, you should also look for gold. Um, I just miss gold. And definitely gold is on that point, which is actually it's crossing the 8,800 level, which was for me the key zone. Also a psych psychological key zone, 8,800. We actually had 21. Um, so yeah, wait for a reaction here again. Uh, on the long term gold, might be touching back the 2000 level okay of course it will not happen in the next few weeks the next few months but expect it for the next year or two years from now um, but here what is driving the market is only the cpi news so i don't think the australian is here gaining value i will i will say only the usd is losing value because of the cpi uh rate that we have just before in, in us that's it uh, again, I don't know so much the, the Australian economy. I know, it, I don't know it so much. Maybe you should ask uh, Jordan, which uh, is uh, also uh, a trader here at the Favors and uh, is Australian, so he might be better than me regarding this subject. But um, again, for me here, the push is only because the USD is losing value and not probably not the opposite. I 
mean, it's both, but you know, what is pushing the most actually is, is, the, is the USB. Uh, okay, guys, uh, we reached the end of the session, so um, uh, oh, we do that. Okay, um, so thank you for all the people that stay with me until the end. Uh, was quite intensive, a lot of movement. Uh, was successful in the Euro, took the stop loss in the gold. Uh, again, I will look further if we can open uh, mm -hmm. another time. Uh, but yeah, very interesting session. Be careful for tomorrow. There is the FOMC. Um, I don't know what they will tell tell about, but I think this is, uh, you know, you can expect what they will say. Inflation is decreasing. We are actually managing the inflation. Uh, the market is all, all probably already, you know, pricing it um, into the market. Uh, but probably there will be also some movement. You know, we we never know what can happen. Um, and no, it's it's the shift continue between a risk off and a risk on environment. Risk off, which means we uh, we we want to take our cash and put it into a risk uh, risky asset like stocks, probably crypto uh, and uh, and oil. Maybe I don't know. Maybe other risky assets. Well, also, crypto pushed with the USD, as you see, guys. I, don't, I didn't see show you the chart, but. It seems the same uh, mindset. So thank you guys for staying with me until the end. I appreciate. Um, we stay in touch uh, and I wish you uh, good luck in our programs and as a trader in general. Goodbye, guys. Thank you.